All right, this is part two of how to sketch a fashion flat in Illustrator in 20 minutes or less because this is what brands expect you to do if you wanna work in the fashion industry. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take what we started in part one, we're gonna reflect it, add some details, start getting our sketch a little bit more hashed out, and then we're gonna finish it off in part three and four. These are all linked in the playlist. Make sure you watch all the parts to really get a thorough understanding. I will also remind you that any of the sort of detail things that I don't go super into in the video because we are just getting this done in 20 minutes to show you it can be done, uh, all those videos are linked below so you can check out each of those specific things in terms of how to do that actual uh, trick that I'm showing in the video. So what we're gonna do is with our ha half of our sketch drawn, I'm gonna select everything, Command or Control A, and we're gonna grab our Reflect cool Tool, hotkey letter O, hover over our guide in the middle, and Option or Alt click to reflect that. That will reflect along the center front guide. Make sure you're reflecting with the preview on that you will get what you want. And we'll hit copy, which copies and reflects it at the same time. Super cool. I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool, click and drag over those two anchor points there. Command or control J, these two here. Command or control J to join them. Now my entire outline of my garment is one continuous path. This is really handy because the next thing I'm gonna do, turn that jacket off on the layers panel. I'm gonna select everything except the zippers. I'm gonna hold the shift key to deselect those. And I wanna create separate shapes for some of these panels where that rib texture was in the jacket. So I'm gonna use the shape builder tool. Again, I have a full tutorial on this, shift M, and I'm just gonna click where I want to create separate shapes. Now these were all drawn as individual paths, but by using this, we are now turning them into shapes that we will then be able to fill with our rib texture, which will create super, super fast here. I'm just gonna create a black rectangle and then copy that down below, make it a little bit longer, a white rectangle, drag and drop this into my swatches panel. Oh, I think I already had one in there, that's all right. Now you learned how to do that. And I will select this shape, all the shapes where that rib texture goes. We're gonna fill those with the rib texture. So that looks pretty good. Now, some of these don't look that great, so we can change the directionality. I'm gonna select these two, grab the R, which is the rotate tool over here on the toolbar, and I'm gonna hold the tilde key, which is the squiggly one in the upper left corner, and rotate that. Again, I have a whole tutorial on doing this. Rotate tool and we will rotate that over that way. So once we have those filled in, that looks pretty good. Let's draw some more details. So I'm gonna turn my sketch back on and I'm gonna draw this pocket right here. Hotkey letter M to grab the rectangle tool. I'm gonna draw a little rectangle for this pocket. That's not what I want it to look like. So the letter D gives me my default stroke and fill. I'm gonna choose object path, add anchor points. This add an adds anchor points uh, halfway along all the paths. And this I wanted to do because I'm gonna use my direct selection tool to grab that specific anchor point, nudge it down to create a nice point. Again, I'll select that entire object, object path, Offset path is now what I want to use to draw some stitching around the edge. So I think that looks okay. We'll choose okay and we will then change this to a dashed line. I like a few specific settings on my dashed line, round caps and corners and this setting here so that the corners look really nice. I'm also gonna drag and drop a snap onto this. It's a little big, so let's make him teeny tiny. Not teeny tiny, but smaller. And I'm gonna select all of this and group it. I'll remind you all these trims. Uh, you can grab my library for free. It's linked below the video. With all these trims, you can turn into symbols and use on all your sketches over and over. This is one of the great things about Illustrator is that you don't have to draw this stuff by hand every single time. So once we have that drawn, let's finish drawing the collar and some of these other details. So I'm gonna grab the pen tool and I'm just gonna draw a triangle here that's gonna sort of emulate the collar on this side. And once that's done, hotkey letter D, default fill and stroke. I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool, select this specific corner and pull that in because it's gonna make it nice and rounded. If you did not see that little corner widget show up, you're using a version of Illustrator that does not have that feature. I think it was, I forget when it was released to be totally honest with you, um, but if not, you'll draw that manually. Um, but if, like as I did, grab your direct selection tool, grab that anchor point, you see this little corner widget, isn't that nice? It's really a great tool. 
I'll drag and drop this over here. And I need some edge stitching on this. Whoops. Drag and drop this over. We have a stacking order issue, so I'm just gonna grab that, send it to the back. Now, let's grab, bleh, let's add <laughs> object path, do do do, offset path, preview for our stitching. Okay, that looks good. Uh, didn't do that, that's okay. All right, dashed line, there we go. That looks pretty good. And a couple things. We wouldn't have stitching right here, so using the direct selection tool, I'm just gonna just delete that and that. So that would be a little more accurate as to how it is in real life. And let's just add our zipper right here. So I'm gonna drop that. Again, I'm just gonna use one of the brushes that I already have drawn. And if it comes out weird, it's because you've got a dash line turned on. So turn that off and we'll change the directionality of our brush, bottom of the brush panel. We did this in the first video. So if you missed that, you can check it out there. And then let's just add the little bit of brush, uh, zipper brush, that not zipper brush, zipper teeth <laughs> that we would see along the edge of this portion of the collar. And again, I'm just gonna kind of wing this. And this is the one that I want. And I want to flip that again. I never remember which one it is. All right, so take the fill color off of that as well. And let's group this and bring that to the front. So the zipper would really sort of be behind it. Um, this is a weird thing where you're trying to have the open zipper turn into a closed zipper and vice versa, where the zipper would kind of twist in real life. This gets a little wonky. There's no perfect solution. Um, it's just kind of how it goes. And we will flip that one as well. Ah, flip across. All right, because we just want to have a little bit, and you can try to align this a little bit ni more nicely here. That looks pretty good. And we will group this and group it with that and then bring, uh, oops. Did I not group that? There we go, group that. Group it with this and bring that whole thing to the front. All right, so there we go. So now we have added our zippers. The one thing I will say, they look a little big, so I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller. I'm gonna select all the instances of the zippers which is easy to do because they're all drawn nicely as brushes. And we're just gonna change the stroke weight to about 0.75. And now they're all a little smaller and it looks a little bit more proportional. So in the next video, we will dive into more details, finishing off the entire sketch with the fur and the belt, as well as some nice finishing touches that make your sketch look really, really beautiful and sexy. So thanks so much for watching. Please tune into parts three and four, which are coming up right next. Uh, grab the free trim library. If you didn't yet, it is linked below the video. And I'll see you in the next video. Again, you can find more resources and tutorials and support on getting ahead in the cutthroat fashion industry at my website, successfulfashiondesigner.com.